What is the most reverend? What is that title? Stay tuned. God bless you, friends. Thank you for joining me on Morning Nuggets. This is yours truly, Pastor Nate, and it is my absolute pleasure that I can speak with you. I'm glad that you decide to watch this video. What does this title mean? The Most Reverend. Well, when I researched it, that title comes from the Roman Catholic Church. They might use the term Archbishop because the Most Reverend and Archbishop are used interchangeably in the Roman Catholic Church. Now, there's a lot of scuttlebutt. There's a lot of talk about the title. What is that? What does that mean? So I figured I'd come and talk about it. It's a respected title for leaders, church leaders. And apparently the Church of God in Christ is part of their protocol when they bring bishops in to name them the most Reverend. Now, I'm not opposed of titles, although I'm not hung up on titles because I feel like if you are holding a title, your lifestyle should be consistent with the titles. I mean, they had titles and offices in the Bible. If you look at Ephesians, you'll see prophets, apostles, teachers, pastors, and so forth. In fact, Sarah called her husband Abraham Lord in Genesis 18 and 12. And we know that doesn't mean the most high. In that sense, Lord means a master or a authoritative figure or a ruler. Who better could have held that title than Abraham? The problem I have when others have titles and they're not walking worthy of those titles. And Paul addressed that in Ephesians 4 and 1. He says, walk worthy of the vocation in which you are called. And I think many of you have concerns about titles and you get turned off when somebody says, I'm a pastor, I'm a preacher, I'm a prophet, I'm a apostle. That just immediately turns you off because you have seen so much mess and so much foolishness and so much corruption in the church that when somebody says I'm such and such, it turns you off. But friend, let me tell you, everybody is not corrupt. God's got some true prophets out there that you've never heard of that he's going to raise up one day. God's got some true apostles out there, some true pastors. Every pastor is not a scammer, uh, teachers and evangelists. God's got some people out there who are walking uprightly. Don't just discount everybody. The inauguration was very interesting. And as you can see, going out, he's carrying the staff. I'm assuming that staff means that he's taking the role of the shepherd over the church of God in Christ, meaning that he has a lot of sheep up under his leadership. So ceremonies were a big thing in the Bible. When they're known it, Kings, they had somewhat of a ceremony. According to 2 Kings 11 and 12, it says that they brought the king's son out and they pl placed a crown on his head and they declared him king. So to me, that's somewhat of a ceremony. It's okay if you have the ceremonies, if you like. I know when I got ordained, I told my pastor I didn't necessarily want a ceremony. I mean, that doesn't validate the anointing or if God has called me or not. If you want to, you can. I know some churches when you get ordained or you, you come into uh, the role of a bishop or an apostle, they have these extravagant ceremonies. Some get swords and rings and uh, different things. I know on the first Sunday, we're required to wear our collar. Uh, I'll do it to follow protocol because that's the house rules. I'm not too particular about that call anyway because it's plastic and it chokes me to death. I got to get a soft call. If you want to have a ceremony, if you want to use titles, that's fine with me. But the main thing is if you say you are a pastor, be a true pastor. Be a pastor after God's own heart. If you say you are a prophet, be a true prophet of God. Because nowadays these people have glamorized the apostles and the prophets. But if you look in scripture, those offices weren't highly thought of. I mean, if you look at the prophet, the prophet always had to tell the king, thus said the Lord, and it wasn't always good. I mean, they even tried to kill Elijah. And if you look at Paul's ministry, he was an apostle. Look what happened to him, shipwrecked, snake bitten. He was beaten and robbed, different things like that. And the list just goes on. So it, it's not really a glamorous gift. Why everybody is glamorizing and trying to seek after it. If you're a true prophet or a true apostle, if you're walking truly in your calling, you're going to face a lot of opposition. Those offices are not glamorous. 
I would venture to say that Bishop Drew Sheard deserves it because I've never heard a scandal. I've been following their ministry, the Clark sisters, in the 90s for some years now. His sister-in-laws, Twinkie, Dorinda, Jackie, all of them. I've been listening to their music. I've even watched the show, The Sheards. So I followed them throughout the years. And I've never heard any type of scandal, any kind of corruption regarding Bishop Shear. And congratulations to him. I pray that he takes to Church of God in Christ to astronomical levels. I pray that God would lead him in this endeavor. Friend, thanks again for listening. If you're getting value from these videos, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button. In the meantime, in between time, be at peace and not in pieces. Till next time, my friend.